Hi everyone! Today we are starting to talk about Photoshop filters and learn how to use some of them for textile design. So let's start our lesson number 22. If you have a second, please subscribe for my channel. Very often my students ask me, how do you start your print if you need to design from scratch? Do you really start to draw all elements? Honestly, it would be the best way to create the timeless piece of art. But I doubt our customers really need the second Mona Lisa printed on their casual dress. So, I always start to look for some interesting live elements on internet, and the filter palette is my biggest help to turn all bunches of random objects into dramatic, cohesive art accessible for printing process. Moreover, if you learn how to use filters fluently, it will give you the opportunity to create impressive prints even though you are not very confident with freehand drawing. Let's find any pretty images on internet, for instance, uh, this Gerber. I download in PNG format with transparent background to make our life easier, but I think you can find any flower you like and clean the background quickly. Go to main menu, select filter, filter gallery. See how many filters we have and how many variations we can make out of this only one flower. I think many of them might be very helpful for creating a new layout. Let's do one very simple exercise. Create a canvas about 12 by 12 inches. Assume our repeat is 12. Resolution 200 dpi. Copy our flower and toss it around creating a simple all-over print. Of course, it will need a repeat and color reduction later on. Don't flatten layers. It's already not bad, but it's a bit boring, isn't it? Looks like old-fashioned window curtain. Let's try to apply some filters. Select first Filter, Filter Gallery, try Cut Out. Adjust a bit. Second, Dry Brush. Well, the third one, try some of brush strokes. I like spray strokes. Then distort glass sketch. Chrome, wow. Then texture, mosaic tile. Texture Texturizer. As you can see, I can adjust filter parameters instantly. I think now print is more interesting, but kind of not consistent and busy. Let's create the new print using my favorite filter, Liquify. Go back. Select one flower. Go to Filter, Liquify. Choose Forward Warp Tool. Now, Adjusting brush size and brush density, try to modify our Gerbera to change its look as much as possible. Now select the second one. Change its petals with the same tool. But can we make it even more different? Choose Blow tool and blow out the center of the flower. See, it's getting more different. I'd like to make center perfectly round, so go back to Forward Warp tool and adjust it a little. What about this one? Go to Packer tool. It allows us to make a center much smaller. What else? Let's try Push left tool. Try pushing petals slightly. Be careful, don't push it too much. The next one. 
going to forward verb 2. And the center is slightly smaller. The next one, what else do we have left? Twill clockwise. It's cool, but maybe too much. By the way, if we don't like something, we always can go back using a reconstruct tool. Trill just a bit. Then pull petals with forward warp tool. The next one. Let's do another trick. Select forward warp tool, but bigger size and pull the entire flower over. Then adjust a bit with push left and the center. And the last one, again with twirl. Let's combine blow tool and pucker tool to make petals more uneven and then adjust with forward work. Now, duplicate layer, close one. What do we see? Flowers look pretty much different, but almost in similar size. Let's blow out some of them with blow tool. For this option, make a brush larger than the flower. See, our design is becoming more and more interesting. Now, close the upper layer, open second layer, choose Packer tool. With large brush size, make flowers smaller. Look at the entire design, isn't it cool? But let's toss our flowers around in a better way. Rotate some of them. Combine some of them in clusters. Clusters always look more sophisticated. Now, let's continue to play with some flowers. I'd like to proceed with Pucker too. But in this time, I'm applying the brush asymmetrically. See how fantastic our flowers can appear. Maybe this center is too small. Let's make it bigger with Blow tool. Deselect. We can make a final touch up with Forward Warp tool for each layer separately. Upper layer, and then lower layer. If you want, try a bit of twirl tool for more dramatic effect. What else? Is anything missing? Frankly speaking, I'd add some leaves. Go to internet, type leaf. What about this one? Save, select green, select leaf shape, copy, paste onto new layer, behind. Let's toss it around. Don't merge layers. Now go to Filter, Liquify and make our leaves more interesting. Here you can use all of our tools. Forward Warp tool, Twill, 
Parker. Blow. Do you have to work on the entire layer or select each leaf separately? Any of them works. You can use your creativity. Maybe the best way is to select each cluster. You can do this more accurate. I think the new original print is almost done. You can make a repeat. In this case, I'd suggest to work on each layer separately. Please see my lesson number 15, how to do repeat for multi-layered print in Photoshop. Let's make a vertical repeat for memory refreshing. Select all, image, crop. Choose upper layer, filter, other, offset. Offset amount is 12 inches, multiply 200 dpi, divide by 2, 1200. Going to next layer, filter offset, leaves, filter offset. Fill the hole. In the same way, you can do a horizontal repeat. You know already how to do this. Let's not waste our time. Now, do you like our new layout? I do. But to me, it's a bit boring in terms of flower colors, almost monochromatic. Let's make kind of 3D effect. We pretend the flowers from lower layer are behind the upper layer flowers. So this can cast shadow. Go to low layer. From the tool menu, choose burn tool. Choose soft brush, appropriate size, arrange mid-tones, exposure, you can keep 100%. But for some delicate colorway, make lower. Airbrush on, protect tones off. Start to brush flower where you think you may absorb shadow. Terrific. Now you can go to upper layer and add some slight shadow in several spots just for deepness. Try something else. Switch burn tool to dodge tool. Click and hold. The same parameters, mid tone, airbrush on. Very gentle touch ups, bringing more life to our Gerbers. I think it's perfect. The last step, we have to reduce colors. Remember, no more than 12. Let's type 20, diffusion 25. Image mode color table. We don't need four for greens, two luxury for leaves. Replace with other green. This yellow is absolutely useless. Replace with white. Another light color, also with white. Back to RGB. Back to index. Four colors have to go away. Here, this brown is not important. Replace with dark pink. From here, go one by one. This could be replaced. This is fine, fine, fine. Back to RGB. Back to index. 13. One is unwanted. Which one we can sacrifice? Basically any. This, this. I'm killing this one. Not bad. Back to RGB. 
and index again. Look, 12 colors. Now, as we remember, we can create any desired colorway by clicking colors one by one. So see, now we have an original floral print, which you do from scratch using only one filter and two basic elements from internet. And because it's small natural photo elements, no one accuse you in the design stealing. And the big secret. No one notice if you are not confident with freehand drawing. So now you know how to use liquify filter for the original design, even if you can create art elements from scratch fluently. Next time we will continue to use Photoshop filters. Please subscribe to my channel, like it if you still didn't, and please don't forget to check your bell. See you soon.